Among the studio splash screens of development team Frogware and publisher Big Ben Interactive, a disclaimer greets players when booting up their latest game, The Sinking City. It's unlike most disclaimers seen at the beginning of video games. While damning the racial apprehension from both H.P. Lovecraft and the society of which he lived in, it alerts that these tensions will be rendered in The Sinking City authentically, rather than the developers pretending they never existed. This is the first of the many facets of Lovecraft's work and spirit that's illustrated with feverish attention to detail. So today on Give Good Games Money, we're going to talk about The Sinking City and how Frogware's strong literacy and understanding of H.P. Lovecraft's writing and flaws make this their strongest literary detective outing to date. Frogware is a unique voice in the games industry. The Ukraine-based development studio found a niche in bringing English literature from the likes of Jules Verne and Bram Stoker to the world of video games, eventually diverting their full attention to putting out titles that centered around Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character of Sherlock Holmes. These titles gradually improved upon themselves with each iteration, as every entry found its balance more and more between a heavy-handed narrative mystery and flashy action set pieces. Which leads us to The Sinking City, a game which is separated from other seminal Lovecraftian games such as Bloodborne or Amnesia The Dark Descent. Frogware has specifically set out to make the purest HP Lovecraft experience, with the objective of crafting a game which adapts Lovecraft's works first and foremost. This is achieved by combining his worlds, thematics, and writing style into a soul-captivating narrative that follows private investigator Charles W. Reed. Reed is a war veteran, tormented by nightmares he is attempting to decipher by traveling to the Sinking City's open-world setting of Oakmont, Massachusetts. While being a fairly standard psychological horror protagonist whose baggage is expectingly going to be unpacked throughout the main story, the delirium of Reed is palpable. Just as soon as he's off his restless boat trip to Oakmont, he's thrown headfirst into a series of cases that center around everything from the occult, the amphibious people of Innsmouth, and a collapsing social order that uses bullets as its primary currency. These various mysteries enrapture Reed, as the city quite literally and figuratively sinks beneath his feet. Horror in The Sinking City is balanced in ways that aren't typical for other Lovecraftian expressions, executing its terror with facets of the gruesome and grandiose primarily. A lot of good cosmic horror mostly shies away from presenting the opposing force, relying on the fear of the unknown, yet from the opening cutscene of The Sinking City, Reed is already presented with entities that stretch the limits of players' imaginations. This cacophony of unfathomable creatures is fully realized while progressing through the story, as enemies continuously terrify with their unflinching variety, cultivating a tense experience that culminates into an engaging third-person horror experience. Accompanying the creatures is a sanity gauge that must be looked after as well. If Reed spends too much time around a maligned murder victim or using his supernatural senses, his perception of the world around him shifts as he succumbs to his own psyche and kills himself. His sanity must be managed in tandem with the primary gameplay draw of the sinking city found in crime scene investigations. These multifaceted mysteries are best enjoyed by adjusting the difficulty off of the default of newcomer, as piecing together different objects of importance with events leads to the most satisfying gameplay that The Sinking City offers. Yet, the least satisfying part of The Sinking City seems to be its action, as it largely seems that in The Sinking City, Frogware doesn't want players to use bullets. The shooting mechanics are clunky compared to other third-person action titles, and the use of ammo as a currency discourages pulling the trigger as well. However, this is rarely a frustration, since the combat situations are few and far between, and the ability to use your fairly overpowered shovel to dispatch enemies save your bullets consistently. This is a narrative mystery game primarily in the vein of point-and-click adventure games, and among its most ambitious moments of action, its efforts were best served on the writing. To know an artist and fully understand their work, you have to not just have an adoration for their pieces, but also recognize their flaws as a human being. 
due to the sheer literacy and research from the developers at Frogware, the Sinking City manages to be a piece which understands the anxieties and depravities of the late Lovecraft better than most. While still reveling in the masterwork of the horror he accomplished, they understand that this wouldn't have been possible without his faults, fluently posing new questions and queries that ponder our human existence among his specific brand of cosmic horror. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanted to join the list of people that you currently see going down on the credits, you can do so by backing me on my Patreon for as little as a dollar. As well, I know it's been quite a while since I've made a video on this channel. I've been hard at work since E3 trying to piece together some content that I can put on this channel, as well as keeping up with the review cycle here. Anyway, you all have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing and giving the video a like if you enjoyed it.